Trading signals are basically a service provided to help traders make money. I say basically. The signals are just the, the skeleton uh, because you can get trading signals and if you're with a service company where the win-loss ratio is, say, 75 to 25, and you jump on those 25% of their calls or their signals that tend to be the losers, then it's not really going to help you much that you're subscribing to the trading signal company or setup or service because you've got to be discriminate. You've got to be able to take their signals. And we say this a lot on my Telegram group, do your own research. Take the signals, look at the chart, do everything that you know to do to make sure that you are sure that the signal um, will yield profit. So basically, as a day trader, you need to be able to confirm the signals. If you can't confirm the signals, don't use them. Don't don't get into the trade. It's not it's not hundred percent the fact that you get a trading signal. So what I want to do is I'm going to start off with. Let me switch my document here. A particular trading signal. So here we have. Uh, Trading signal set up for maximum profit. So we have this coin called Atom. And this actually is a live signal. So I am subscribed to a trading signal service. I'm only subscribed to the free service. They offer a free, like a, a skeleton service. So with a free service, I think they will make available something like maybe four to six trades a month. Uh, four to six signals a month. But if you actually signed up with a paid service, uh, they I, I haven't I haven't been with them for the paid service, but I believe they offer up to 80 signals in a month. So if you're full time, which unfortunately I'm not, but if you're full time and you have 10, 12 hours a day, yes, it would make sense to pay into the service because you can fully utilize the signals that they provide. Okay, so um, here we have a setup, Atom and USDT. So the first thing I want us to do when you get a trade signal, obviously you're going to go to your charts. Now it's not going to be, oh, my friend said, you know, because your friends could have got in on this, could have got in. Okay, let's open this up. Okay, so this is that chart. It's called Cosmos. The ticker symbol is A-T-O-M, Atom. Your friend could have got in right at the bottom here. Good for him. And then he tells you about it, and the price is right up here. Of course, if you jump in that trade, you're going to lose. <laughs> so this is why you got to be able to go to your charts and look at it. So usually if I'm going to start analyzing a chart, I usually will start on the high up time frame. I think this is, I don't know what I'm thinking. Let me come out so I can see. Up here, this is a daily. So it's good to start, you know, the monthly, you just want to get a bird's eye view. So we look at this monthly. No, I'm on the weekly. Now look at this weekly chart. This is just a beauty all the way back two years ago. I mean, this thing just didn't go anywhere for the, the, the better space of two years. And then about here, we can see the moving averages begin to separate the blue and the, the yellow lines they begin to separate and that's a good sign because there's been a golden cross golden cross and the further apart your moving averages the more indication that you're in a bullish trend so let's look at it but look at it let's increase this so this we're still on the weekly looking at this chart i like it why do i like it because we have an area of consolidation Look at this area of consolidation right there. It consolidated and consolidated uh, for the space of two months. You know, it was going up and coming back down and, you know, not really making any decisive move. And so, which is why it's a good chart. And then you look on this candlestick. 
which is a candlestick for the week of May the 3rd, so the very first week of May, and it broke out of consolidation. So the best time to enter into a trade will be when you break above resistance. Let's get rid of that. Break above resistance. So this is still with the weekly. Let's go to the daily. The lower down you go on your time frames, the more detailed are your charts. Um, if we go back to the weekly, actually, and look, look at the MACD, guys. Oh, this is a beauty. Because you can see this light, the, the darker green shows that uh, increase in trend upwards. And then the lighter green shows that period of consolidation. But look at what we got. The first week of May, that light green turned into dark green. So again, we're breaking out of the period of consolidation. The point of breakout is the point at which you really want to enter into your trade. Okay, so now we're on a daily. I like to draw my lines, my trend lines, my uh, su support and resistance lines on the daily. And of course, the previous high over here, the previous all-time high is an obvious level. We draw that and throughout the period of consolidation, we would have been uh, waiting for breakout above the all-time high, so the resistance. To use those trading signals, we want to break above the previous all-time high, which to be honest, has changed from that is now this. If I were to enter into this signal, use this signals to enter into a trade, I'm gonna have to wait. Yes, I got the signal service, say two days ago, three days ago, Yes, you know, it came into my inbox, it beeped and it's there, but it may not be the right time to enter into it. So again, patience is the name of the game. If you could have just one attribute as a trader, then it's going to have to be patience. If you can't wait and learn to wait for the trade to come to you, then it's not going to work. Take it from me. <laughs> um, I have been a very hasty uh, noob. And even now, though I don't consider myself a noob, I sometimes can be a little hasty. You know, in a hurry to enter a trade. Now I'll move over to Binance because on Binance, I'm going to actually set this trade up. And so here we are on Binance, which is the largest crypto uh, exchange in the world. So hopefully most of you have a Binance account. Okay, so now we're going to go to the signal. Let's go to that signal setup. So what does it say? Let's break it down. So the signal enters your inbox, it comes to your phone, it says Adam and USD, you know, it's going places, it's trending up. Buy, make sure you buy between 28 and $30 because it's USDT. So 28 and 30 USDT. First take profit is at $34. Your second take profit is at 39. Your third take profit is at 49. Set a stop loss at 22. A signal service is no good if there's no stop loss at which to set uh, where you want to, you know, you, you just want that safety, that safety net. If you don't know about stop losses, you need to read up or watch up about stop losses. I have a bunch of videos on my channel um, and you have to get used to using them and getting comfortable with them. Okay, so our first take profit is 34. Let's go and I'm going to set that up. So right now, price action is at $28.14. So I have already purchased some Atom for the purpose of this demonstration, for this live stream. And so the signal says to buy between 20 and 30. So that's about right. I bought at about 28-ish. And I want to set my first take profit. So I'm going to move to the cell, which is right here. And I'm going to do a set up a stop limit. Okay. So the first take profit is 34. So I'm going to put that in the limit price. So we're saying we're not, we don't want to sell before it hits $34. Like with the limit price, you're being specific. Like this is the price at which I want to sell. But we're going to set a stop loss. And, uh, sorry, not a stop loss. We're going to start set a stop price. So Price is increasing and increasing from where we bought it between $28 and $30. And as it is approaching our first take profit point of $34,
we want to create the order. So with a stop order, the order isn't actually created. You're literally, you're setting up the order and it's queued. And you're saying when price gets to, let's say 33.9, when price gets to $33.99, I want you to create um, a sell. So you're going to sell at $34 and I only want to sell a fraction of my my 100%. If you want to sell everything, then of course you're going to sell your 100% with this slider here. But let's say you're only going to sell whatever, let's say 17%. It tells you how much profit you will get and then you click on sell. This confirmation screen is very important. Make sure it's doing what you want it to do. And it says if the last price rises to above $33.99 USDT, an order to sell uh, this amount of Adam at this price will be placed. So we're just setting it up and it goes into your open orders. Open orders meaning orders you have set that have not been um, triggered. So that's our first take profit. Let's go back and see what's the second take profit, $39. So you set up your second take profit again. So 39, did I say? So that's going to go into the limit price, $39. And again, price is increasing. So just before $39, at which you want to sell, when it gets to 38 and 90, then it triggers an, or an order, a sell order to sell at $39. Again, at this point, you could decide you want to sell half of what you got. Want to um, sell. So we're going to click sell. Again, you read over the blurb, make sure it's exactly what you want to do. And then you hit confirm. And then again, it, it cues your second order. And then we do that a third time. I believe that was $42.49. Again, $49, I'd say $48 and like Literally, I like to keep it pretty close. $48.95. So when price is still rising and rising, it gets to $48.95. Pum. Create me a sell order and sell at $49. And so you can now decide you want to sell everything, like everything that's left, the whole 100%. And read this blurb. Is that it? Yep. And then that sets up your three take profit orders. Of course, the all important stop loss is there as well. And we want to stop out in the event that something cataclysmic happens. And with the OCO, all it does is you're able to take profit, set up your take profit and your stop loss at the same time. That's all it does. So the very first box is the price at which you want to take profits. So I think that first price was something like $39, no, no $34. Like that's the first point at which you want to take profit. And the next two boxes are for your stop loss. So the first price, the first box is for your uh, take profit. You want to take profit at $34. That's it. And, but you want to safeguard yourself and set a sub stop loss at the same time. And you say, um, stop loss i'm going to set my stop loss to i think it was 22 and you want to trigger this at 22.1 which i was trying to do with the other one with this kind of order you would because it's a stop loss you probably want to get completely out of your trade right so you would sell everything the 100 percent if you look at what is set up with the oco order it sets up the first value is your take profit and your take profit, it tells you how much you will make, depending on how much you're going to sell of what you hold. The second value here, it says stop loss. And it sets your stop loss. So if price tanks, it's going to sell at um, the figure you put down in the limit box. And that's what OCO is. Pick up my video on my channel on OCO. I think it's called something like Stop Loss and OCO Orders. And hopefully that should help. You know what I would suggest? Buy small amounts of some cheapy coin um, and play around with it. Play around with the Stop Loss and the OCO because when you have some real money, uh, on the market, you want to know what you're doing and you want to be comfortable with what you're doing. So that's what I would suggest. If not, then make sure you have a paper trading account, a demo account where you can actually try these things out. So that's basically how OCO orders would work. 
It's like a combo. Set your take profit and stop loss in one click. I hope you've learned something today. Oh, one very important thing I forgot to say. Two things. I want to thank all of you who have subscribed to my channel because I hit 5,000 subscribers over the last, I think, couple of days. So I want to appreciate all of you who've taken <clears throat> time to subscribe to my channel. I hope I'm making it worth your while. And if I am, I would appreciate that you share with your friends and family so I can continue to grow on YouTube. It's important for um, smaller creators like myself, smaller channels to, it's important for us to get as many likes and subscribes as possible because it helps to promote us on YouTube. And with the promotion, obviously the, our ranking increases. And so, which is so critical to growing on YouTube. So thank you all of you. And don't forget to hit that like button. Look at hitting the like button during a live stream as payment for my time. That's all I ask. Hit that like button and I will be here same time, same place next week, Saturday. So make sure, <laughs> make sure you tune in.